Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about cutting glass. And I'm just using um, thin glass. This is uh, single strength glass, the kind that you use when you frame a picture. It's uh, the easiest glass that you can cut on. I just want you to get a feel for this. Now there's three kinds of cuts that we're going to go over. First is just a regular straight cut. Then we're going to do what we call an, ins uh, um, an inside curve. And then we're going to do an S curve. So these are the three cuts that we're going to make. Now this is a glass cutter. It's different than the kind that you get in the hardware store. And the reason it, it's different is that it's got a reservoir that you can fill with oil. It's got a very, very small carbide wheel. Now, I like to take my glass cutter and hold it as if I'm going to stab the glass. Uh, some people who have been in the glass industry actually like to hold it like this. Um, other people uh, hold it like a pencil. Um, the important part is not how you hold it, but that you hold it in such a way that it's comfortable for you. I find that holding it in stabbing motion gives me a lot of control. And also it lets the um, pressure from my arm go down through my, through my elbow, into my wrist, down directly into the point of the cutter, and I'm able to get a nice firm stroke when I hold it this way. And so now the first thing we do is dip it in uh, a light lubricant, a light oil. That uh, oil then lubricates as we push the wheel along the glass. And for some reason, uh, that little bit of lubricant gives us a better, cleaner um, score. So that's the first thing we're going to do is score the glass. Now listen carefully for this sound. So in order to break it, I put one hand on each side with my thumbs on either side of the score and I rock them apart. Now the next thing we're going to do um, is a little more complex because the glass in a curve, there are uh, it, it, once again, we're, we're aligning the molecules up, but because we're going around a curve, there are lots of different places in that curve where your cutter might have been tipped just a little bit, and so it's a little more difficult to get the glass to fall apart. So this time, I'm going to once again do the same thing. I dip my cutter. These are called grosing pliers. I use the flat blade up, the curved blade is down, and I put the pliers right up to the place that I scored, and I put a little tiny bit of pressure. Now, I don't know if you could see that, but um, there's a shinier place you can see where the glass actually broke all the way through. That's called a run. That's what we're trying to do now. We're running the score. I'm going to go up to the other edge and I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it. I'm just putting enough on there. Did you hear it? It popped. I can see now that it's broken. The glass is actually broken apart here and here. So now it's pretty safe for me. And, and if you look at the edge here, you can see the, uh, the run. The glass is actually run right here. I can just take my, my glass cutter, I pull down and out, and it separates, and both of our corners are saved. Okay, now the next technique, this is a compound curve. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that the glass could be holding and try not to fall apart. On this one, I'm going to do my S curve. Now that's pretty, pretty complex. And so in this, this time, we're going to use the nut on the back of the oil cutter. I close my, my nut tight so that oil doesn't continue to leak out of the glass cutter, and I tap. And as I tap, this is running the score, and I'm angling my, my glass down to the table, and I just tap gently, and listen for the sound. Hear how the sound is changing? <laughs> 